Welcome to Yunkers Specifying Sustainable Flooring CPD. In this presentation, we will show you how a solid wood floor is one of the most sustainable flooring options there is. A solid hardwood floor is an all natural material that is sustainably sourced and manufactured and contributes to a low carbon build. We will show you the many ways in which a solid wood floor can contribute to a more sustainable and environmentally sound project and how to identify the credentials of what you are specifying through internationally recognised accreditation schemes and assessment tools. We will demonstrate how using wood as a building material actually benefits our environment and helps mitigate the climate crisis and at the same time provides flooring which helps promote and maintain a healthy indoor climate. Starting with a short introduction to Yunkers, including the company's long history of caring for the environment, this presentation will demonstrate the many applications a solid hardwood floor has as a sustainable option. The longevity of a Yunkers solid hardwood floor extends the floor's lifespan for as long as 60 years this gives Yunkers floors a low life cycle cost. At the end of the floor's life, it is fully recyclable, reusable and biodegradable. Yunkers is Europe's leading manufacturer of pre-finished solid wood flooring for sports, residential and commercial projects. The company has a long and proven history of caring for the planet, taking steps to make the most of raw materials in a sustainable way since it was founded in the 1930s. Yunkers floors are made from nothing but solid hardwood through and through, a material which is naturally low in embodied carbon. The way Yunkers flooring is manufactured means it is stable with a low moisture content and therefore guaranteed for use with all major underfloor heating systems. Full technical support and advice is available before, during and after every project, no matter the size. Yunkers projects are available in MBS cloud-based specification platforms. Full documentation, including BIM objects, are also available to download on the company's website. Another of Yunkers' strengths lie in its own produced wood care range the perfect complement to its high quality flooring. Most of Yunkers flooring is delivered pre-finished in a choice of finishes, so as soon as it's installed, it's ready to walk on. A factory finish ensures a perfect application of oil or lacquer, choose from ultramat, matte or silk matte, to give the optimal protection. A full range of professional cleaning and maintenance products applied as part of a maintenance program will keep the floor looking good and performing perfectly for decades, if not longer. A history of commitment. As a young master of forestry, Fleming Juncker recognised Danish forests were suffering a crisis. 75% of the local beechwood was sold as firewood. He set out to make use of timber in industrial production and founded Yunkers Sawmill in 1930. After securing an order to provide Danish state railways with 40,000 railway sleepers, he rented a 7,000 square metre plot from Kurg shipyard on the outskirts of Copenhagen, Denmark. Fleming Yunker understood for a forest to remain healthy and productive, it had to be used and renewed in a managed way. It was his philosophy to use the timber resources in the best possible way and this has been the company's philosophy since its foundation. In 1930, the company was founded by Fleming Juncker with production of hardwood flooring starting in 1932. 1953 saw the introduction of Juncker's first sports floor followed by the production of our lacquers in 1955. 1962 saw the implementation of Juncker's press drying technique. In 1972, Yunkers introduced their clip system. 1987 saw the inauguration of the new on-site power station. In 1996, production started of wide board plank flooring. 
1998 saw the inauguration of a new, larger power station, and in 1999 our flooring production became fully automated. Yunkers Flooring – How it's made The way in which Yunkers manufactures its flooring is a vital part of the company's commitment to sustainability and caring for the environment. All floors are manufactured in the company's own factory outside Copenhagen. Every part of the tree is used in the production. What is not used for flooring is used to fuel the on-site power station and surplus energy is sold to the local grid making Yunkers a CO2 neutral company. Large sections of wood are used to make the floors. This means less waste and lower energy consumption. Minimal use of adhesives allow full recycling as the wood is not contaminated. Yunkers solid hardwood floors are made using specially developed press drying techniques which renders the floorboard stable with a low moisture content. This unique manufacturing technique enables Yunkers to guarantee its floors for use with underfloor heating, not something you can take for granted with all wooden floors. Specifying sustainable flooring, asking the right questions. How can you identify if a flooring option is sustainable? What are the questions to ask? How deep do you dig? Today, most companies talk about sustainability and rightly so, but there is more to it than eye-catching marketing materials to take into consideration. The choice of flooring has long-term implications on a building's ability to achieve net zero status, lower its operational costs and provide a healthy indoor climate for its inhabitants. Its lifespan will have a great impact on life cycle costs. So how do you know what is sustainable? The following needs to be considered. What is it made of and how is it manufactured? For example, solid wood is one piece of timber and an engineered board is several layers of different species. Are all the various species in multi-layered floors certified? Does it have the correct certification and accreditation, such as chain of custody? Longevity. Does it really have a lifespan of 60 plus years? Not all wood floors with veneered tops can claim this. Can it be reused, repurposed and recycled? At the end of its life, is it biodegradable and not contaminated? Will it contribute towards low operational costs and net zero projects? How does it compare to other flooring options? A word on wood. Not many building materials grow on trees, literally. Made from sun, air, water and soil, wood is a naturally renewable resource. Using only wood from sustainably managed forests means forests are renewed, continue to thrive and remain healthy as well as capture carbon from the atmosphere, known as the carbon cycle through photosynthesis. For low carbon buildings, hardwood is a great material to use as it is naturally low in embodied carbon. Solid wood can be recycled at the end of its life. In addition, offcuts and waste during the installation phase can also be recycled. This presentation will show you how using more wood is good for the environment. A word on wood, nature's own carbon store. Wood absorbs carbon. While a tree grows, it absorbs enormous amounts of carbon dioxide, storing it in the wood. In fact, 50% of the weight of dry wood consists of carbon taken from the atmosphere, making wood a key player in our fight to reduce the effects of climate change. The process of trees absorbing carbon dioxide is called photosynthesis. During this process, a tree takes energy from the sun, carbon dioxide from the air, and water from the ground and turns it into sugar and oxygen. In short, growing more trees will reduce the amount of carbon in our atmosphere, reducing the amount of greenhouse gases, halting global warming while at the same time giving us oxygen. More importantly, wood is the only building material that has the natural ability to take the carbon from the atmosphere and store it. Wood is a carbon positive material. In contrast to concrete and steel, the other most widely used construction materials, using wood is good for our climate. Wood comes from a renewable and sustainable source. Each cubic metre of wood grown by a tree holds 0.9 tonnes of CO2 absorbed from the atmosphere. 
A single mature tree absorbs carbon dioxide at a rate of 54 kilograms per year. In one year, a hectare of forest can absorb twice the CO2 produced by the average car's annual mileage. When a tree eventually dies and decomposes, it lets the carbon it has been storing back into the atmosphere. Therefore, only growing trees to store carbon is not enough. To be sustainable, we must grow and harvest trees. A failed tree will no longer remove carbon from the air, but it will continue to store the carbon that it previously removed, even when it's made into flooring or other wood products. Building materials such as concrete and steel emit a lot of CO2 during production. Instead of emitting CO2, wood absorbs it whilst growing. This infographic offers a clear visual representation of why it is so important to use wood as a building material compared to other building materials. An all-natural wooden floor. By specifying a wooden floor, your project will benefit from the following. A floor that continues to store carbon that the trees absorb whilst growing. With a long lifespan, a solid hardwood floor will keep CO2 out of the atmosphere and not contribute to global warming. After it has fulfilled its original purpose, a solid hardwood floor can be reused, repurposed and recycled. If it's manufactured with the energy generated from waste material during the flooring production process, there is less wastage and no reliance on fossil fuels. Manufacturing processes matter. The way a product is manufactured affects its environmental impact. It's important to ask questions about how a product is made. Is it made with renewable and green energy? Does it rely on fossil fuel derived energy? How does the manufacturer deal with the waste? Can byproducts be made from what some would consider waste material? How do they source their raw materials? Raw material sourcing. Arguably, wood is the most sustainable building material there is as long as it comes from properly managed and accredited forests. A responsible manufacturer will have proof of chain of custody by working exclusively with suppliers who cultivate the forest based on sustainable principles. This offers the specifier and client transparency and traceability. A sustainably managed forest includes a long-term vision which considers everything a forest provides, including ecological and social benefits. As well as sequestrate carbon from the atmosphere, forests help ecosystems and biodiversity thrive and improve the quality of drinking water in their vicinity. Social benefits include the pure beauty of the landscape forests provide and any type of leisure activity within the forest, such as hiking. When trees are harvested in a sustainably managed forest, new trees are planted to start the cycle of growth again. Sustainable forestry halts deforestation and ensures the long-term supply, not just of wood, but of all the other benefits a healthy, thriving forest brings. To grow a sustainably managed forest, it must be thinned. This process is necessary to provide the space the trees need to continue growing to an adequate size and quality. Thinning happens at different times depending on the type of tree grown in the forest. While trees grow, they gradually take up more space and resources. Hence, some trees need to be removed for others to be able to grow. Independently verified certification. Independently verified standards and certification is an increasingly useful tool for specifiers. Simplifying the specification process by providing relevant data from trusted, internationally recognized bodies. Certification and accreditation also allow specifiers to compare like-for-like -like products much more easily. For example, a company's environmental impact. EPD – Environmental Product Declaration An EPD evaluates the environmental impact of a company's manufacturing and material sourcing. It also evaluates its declarations for dismantling, transportation as well as disposal and the potential for recycling. FSC and PEFC. FSC Forest Management Certification confirms that the forest is being managed in a way that preserves biological diversity. It also has to benefit the lives of local people and workers while ensuring it sustains economic viability. FSC certified forests are managed to strict environmental, social and economic standards. 
There are 10 principles that any forest operation must adhere to before it can receive FSC. These principles cover a broad range of issues, from maintaining high conservation values to community relations and workers' rights, as well as monitoring the environmental and social impacts of the forest management. A PEFC label on a product means it comes from a certified forest. A certified forest is managed in line with the strictest environmental, social and economic requirements. Indoor climate. Flooring products can be certified to establish their effect on indoor climate. For example, the Danish Indoor Climate Labelling Scheme. A product with this labelling has undergone extensive degassing and odour tests to ensure there are no chemical substances in the product which adversely affect the air quality in the room. The Danish Indoor Climate Label is recognised by BRIAM, the Building Research Establishment Environmental Assessment Method. ISO 14001 and 5001. ISO 14001 is an environmental management system. It also covers areas such as working environment and energy safety in connection with electrical work. CE marking. CE marking or UK CA marking after the 1st of January 2023 provides evidence of performance standards in respect of fire rating. VO season formaldehyde emissions, strength, slip resistance, thermal conductivity and durability. Beware of greenwashing. With increasing pressure on floor manufacturers to reveal their true impact on global warming, some companies are resorting to greenwashing. If you are digging deeper to find which companies have the best environmental credentials, look for independent certification and tangible evidence. One of the main documents is the Environmental Product Declaration. It contains a detailed analysis of the embodied carbon in the material or product, from extraction of raw materials to gate or end of life, and includes information on carbon offsetting and use of recycled materials. One of the worst examples must surely be when manufacturers invent their own standard to adhere to, complete with a fancy logo. Therefore, you will need to look beyond the marketing strategy and dig for the relevant facts among the irrelevant. Anyone anywhere can call their product green, but if they don't have the data to back up their claim, it's worthless. As part of our global commitment to building a more sustainable future, we have to question and assess every material on its merits. Greenwashing tactics include putting obstacles in the customer's way. They will try to distract with eye-catching reports about their vision or policies to make their staff think environmental or think nature. They will give you a lesson in good environmental practices to convince you that they own the environmental discussion and may include generic interviews with scientists or industry experts. They will talk about what is achievable without actually claiming any results of their own. What you see is all marketing, no substance. Accreditation. Look for established internationally recognised accreditation schemes such as those mentioned previously. Anyone, anywhere can call their product green, but if they don't have the data to back up their claim, it's worthless. As part of the global commitment to building a more sustainable future, we all have to question and assess every material on its merits. Recycled materials. Manufacturers get carbon credit for using recycled materials. This is fine for materials such as metal and glass, which can be recycled time and time again. Plastics, however, often used in carpets, vinyl and polyurethane flooring can be recycled only once. Old vinyl floors cannot be recycled at all and largely go to landfill, risking further contamination of land and oceans by microplastics. At the end of a floor's life, how likely is it that the floor will be recycled? It may be theoretically possible, but does an effective recycling scheme actually exist? If crude oil is the main raw material, for example, synthetic flooring products, the manufacturer will eventually be releasing new crude oil-based carbon into the environment, the very thing global governments and industries are trying to prevent. Offsetting. This is in fact accepted as a way for companies to improve their environmental performance but is only acceptable when used as a short-term measure, say for three to four years. 
It is not acceptable as a long-term core strategy and the RIBA advises UK architects to use offsetting as a last resort. It's not just about carbon. Apart from being naturally low in embodied carbon and having the ability to absorb and store CO2, your choice of floor can contribute to many other aspects of sustainable design. A solid hardwood floor has exceptional longevity and can be easily refurbished to as good as new several times. This doesn't just bring life cycle costs down to save funds for the client, it also saves the energy necessary to manufacture and transport a new floor and ultimately places lower demands on natural resources. The Well Building Standard is the world's first building certification that focuses exclusively on human health and wellness. The choice of flooring has a direct effect on operational carbon figures. A floor which aids daylighting and inhibits overheating will have a positive effect on energy consumption and therefore costs. A floor with excellent recycling capabilities will score very highly when it comes to sustainability. Not only does a solid hardwood floor last for generations, after it's served its initial purpose, it can be lifted and reused as flooring or as another building material. The concept of designing and building for disassembly has gained traction in the last few years. It addresses the growing concern around the high consumption of resources and low recycling rate within the construction industry. It's a design process that facilitates the dismantlement of future buildings. By refraining from mixing materials as far as possible, a building can be more easily taken apart and the materials reused. A very important aspect of net zero building is the refurbishment and restoration of existing buildings. For flooring, this takes on a two-pronged approach. Can the floor easily be installed by methods suitable for older buildings? For example, heritage buildings which may be listed and can the floor itself be refurbished and restored to secure the building's sustainable future? Longevity There aren't many flooring options which can be restored and brought back to as new condition multiple times without losing looks or performance. A solid wood floor can be sanded and refinished 8-10 to 10 times without losing quality or performance. With a typical interval of 12 years between sandings, the gold standard 60 plus years lifespan is easily achievable. Specifying a floor with outstanding longevity has obvious financial benefits by providing low life cycle costs. This also benefits the environment in several ways. It won't contribute to landfill. It places lower demand on natural resources by not needing to be replaced. It saves energy that would have been necessary to manufacture and transport new flooring. A solid wood floor will continue to keep carbon stored and out of the atmosphere. Well-being, providing an optimal indoor climate. The REBA target for indoor climate can be met by specifying a floor which has undergone extensive degassing and odour testing. This ensures there are no chemical substances in the flooring. Look for a recognised testing label which will give you as the specifying architect and your client reassurance the floor will provide an optimal indoor climate with low VOCs. With a perfectly smooth surface, a solid hardwood floor cannot harbour dust or mites. As an all-natural material, wood contributes to an even and balanced indoor climate as it helps maintain temperature in a room and reduces static from any electrical equipment. Wellbeing, a light-coloured floor Selecting a light-coloured floor helps enhance lighting levels as it reflects natural light in a room, reducing reliance on artificial lighting, thereby reducing energy consumption. Additionally, as a light-coloured floor reflects sunlight, it stores less heat, preventing overheating, unlike a dark-coloured floor, thereby reducing the need for air cooling systems in the summer months, conducive to lower operational costs. Recycling and reusing EPD now includes data on potential for recycling and reusing. A floor made in solid hardwood is easy to recycle because the wood is not contaminated. Planks from solid wood floors can be reused in many different ways. One example is a solid beach sports floor shown in this picture. Salvaged from a sports hall, Hoskins Architects specified this floor, keeping the original line markings. This is now installed in the new headquarters for the National Theatre of Scotland. 
The interior features a limited use of materials, of which the reclaimed beach sports flooring becomes a focal point. The worn look of the reused floor, with its randomly placed line markings in various colours, worked perfectly with the rest of the interior and the client decided to leave it as it was. Buyback Scheme A buyback scheme whereby a company works alongside contractors to salvage its product can offer a reclaimed flooring option and prolong the life of a floor substantially. By pairing flooring contractors replacing old floors with those specialising in sourcing, lifting and installing reclaimed floors, old floors can be put to good use in a new home. End of life If the floor has reached the end of its long life, the floorboards are biodegradable, meaning they will decompose naturally without harming the environment. Design for disassembly The Braunstein Tap House, home to award-winning Danish malt whisky, was designed and built with the ability to be dismantled. Its waterfront location is deemed under threat from rising water levels in the future, which led Adept Architecture to create a building that can be taken apart and rebuilt or easily reused or recycled. Thus there is a plan for the building's complete life cycle. The building uses as many sustainable materials as possible. The structure is based on simple tectonic principles, completed with mechanical joints only. As far as possible, building materials used in the construction are not mixed, reducing the volume of waste considerably in comparison to similar constructions. In the UK, 2021's London plan requires demonstration of how components can be dismantled and reused. Restoration, Heritage and Retrofitting A refurbished building restored to ensure a continued long life and sustainable future deserves a good quality floor, which will see the building through the next phase of its life. Restoring older buildings, particularly heritage buildings, will often require what can be considered an honest, natural material to harmonise with the original fabric of the building. A solid hardwood floor is strong, durable, beautiful and will last for decades with the right care and maintenance, even in buildings with a high footfall. Hardwood is a tough, long-lasting surface which is also easy to repair. Most other floor finishes will be stripped out and disposed of after 10 years or less. Another crucial ingredient to successful restoration, refurbishment and retrofitting flooring is a knowledgeable, on-hand technical department that works alongside a network of specialist installers. They may use installation methods such as levelling batten systems, which omit the need for screeds. The installers and technical department provide the expertise to develop techniques and adapt products to fit even the most challenging project. It may be a listed building where fixing to the original fabric is prohibited, an interior where new flooring is required to fit alongside existing materials or an old building upgraded to fulfil modern low energy consumption standards. Experienced flooring contractors are true masters of their craft. This image shows just some of the incredible skill deployed to create some extraordinary floors at Crescent Kerno in Cornwall. Suitably grand for its celebrated location and also fit for purpose as a public building. Here are some example case studies of solid wood floors. Number one is the National Gallery of Ireland by Hennigan Peng. A custom sized wood block was specially developed to replicate the pattern of the original floor. Flooring contractor DJ Kelly and Co Limited. Number two is the Spanish City Pleasure Dome, Whitley Bay by ADP Architecture. A complicated flooring installation featuring a concentric dodecagon pattern where the lines of the flooring on the balcony continues in the circular floor on the level below. Flooring contractor Stenhouse Flooring. Number three is Paul Hamlin Hall, the Royal Opera House. Royal Opera House in-house design team. The large expanse of the hall required a warm, welcoming and durable floor used as a busy restaurant and dining area, as well as for dance classes. Flooring contractor, Pika Floorings Limited. Number four is again Crescent Kerno by Purcell. Set within a UNESCO World Heritage Site and Conservation Area, Crescent Kerno is a new archive and research facility in Cornwall, housed in the formerly derelict brewery buildings, rebuilt and redeveloped whilst carefully conserving many of the historic original features. The solid wood flooring was installed to within an accuracy of 0.6 mil to allow for the varying subfloor levels as well as the difference in levels of the existing granite slabs. 
Around the rectangular sections of granite, the 185mm wide floorboards were cut lengthwise to form frames around the slabs as per the architect's design. Flooring contractor, tree concepts. Number 5 is the Hilda Best Building, St Anthony's College, Oxford, by Purcell. The flooring was fitted in a bespoke geometric pattern designed by the architect, informed by historic drawings and photographs, to complement the elaborate ceiling features. Flooring contractor VA Hutchinson Flooring created all joints and cuts with their own bespoke methods, specially adapted for such intricate work. A testimonial by David Byrne, Senior Architect and Project Lead at Purcell. Solid hardwood flooring was chosen as it is a sustainable, natural product with a long life and low maintenance requirements. The Nordic Oak was selected due to its warm appearance and light colour characteristics, which complement the tones of the historic granite slabs adjacent, whilst enhancing the natural illumination of the main exhibition space and visitor reception area. Different kinds of solid hardwood flooring. Plank floors, traditional floorboard, usually pre-finished and with tongue and groove joints. Strip and two strip floors. Traditionally, narrow TNG strips of hardwood individually fixed, but more modern products will be in the form of two strips of solid hardwood joined together side by side in the factory to make larger pre-finished floorboards. This speeds up the installation process and ensures consistent and high quality installation compared with single strip floors. Herringbone floors, traditional look which includes variants such as twin herringbone, large format herringbone, basket weave etc. Normally available unfinished for on-site finishing, but increasingly manufacturers are offering pre-finished herringbone floors. Parquet floors, a broadly defined category but includes multi-element floors such as hexagonal staves. Any of the 22mm two-strip floors can be used for multi-activity, sports and dance due to their structural strength. Non-structural options known as overlays will be 14 or 15mm thick and have to be installed over a structural screed or timber subfloor. There is an extensive range of colours and finishes on offer to create the required look. The difference between solid and engineered and sustainability implications. Engineered boards are made from multiple layers of wood or composite material and only the top 3mm or 4mm is hardwood. Solid wood floors use the same material through the board's full thickness. These differences have significant environmental impacts. Engineered floors can be sanded only twice and solid floors between 8 and 10 times. This means the lifespan of a solid floor is approximately 4 times longer. This has a significant impact upon use of raw materials, energy, transport and waste. Solid floors are better suited to being repurposed if they are lifted and they still have useful life remaining. Engineered floors are made from many pieces of wood, require more raw materials often obtained from multiple sources of supply, therefore more energy is used. Engineered floors use substantial quantities of adhesives during manufacture, something solid hardwood floors use only in very small quantities. Engineered floors are perceived as more dimensionally stable than solid floors. This is untrue. Engineered product manufacturers do not allow more flexibility with on-site moisture levels or expansion allowances than do solid suppliers. This frequent confusion has come about through creative marketing and persuading customers to believe that engineered floorboards are constructed in the same way as plywood, which they are not. Let's compare the impression different flooring options leave on the planet. Using publicly available data from EPDs, it is possible to compare the global warming potential and embodied carbon levels of a number of commonly specified floor types. The comparison reveals how some flooring products cause an increase in the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, but others will actually reduce it. The latter are often referred to as carbon negative. A textile releases CO2 and is a floor covering typically consisting of an upper layer of pile attached to a backing, typically made from synthetic fibres. A vinyl floor releases CO2 and is also a synthetic floor covering. A man-made product which is laid as a finish directly on a screed base or a timber deck fixed to sprung battens. Epoxy terrazzo is a composite material. 
pulled into place or prefabricated into tiles. It is made of chips of marble, granite, quartz, glass, shell or similar, bound together with either cement or epoxy. This also releases CO2 into the atmosphere. However, a solid hardwood floor absorbs CO2 and is defined by the fact that the entire floorboard is made from a single piece of wood, not from multiple horizontal layers. As you can see from these four examples, only the hardwood floor is carbon negative. Product application and usage. Solid hardwood floors can be used in commercial, residential, hospitality, sports, dance and public buildings. For apartments and projects where acoustic separation is needed, many solid hardwood floor manufacturers offer complete systems. These include the floorboard and acoustic batten or underlay systems that can be used in residential buildings where compliance with building regulations approved document part E is required. For sports and performance floors, a full range of area elastic sports floors complete with undercarriage systems are also available. Very few solid hardwood floors are guaranteed for use with underfloor heating. Look for a manufacturer that can guarantee performance. It is usually possible to strengthen hardwood floors to accommodate retractable seating units. The durable lacquered surface will not be marked by the seating wheels. With sprung floors, it is possible to strengthen the floor and fully retain the floor's sprung quality. Cleaning and maintenance. A range of cleaning and maintenance products are available. So in years to come, the client can renovate the floor and benefit from the 60 year plus lifespan that solid hardwood floors can offer. Most floors wear as a result of abrasion, so good barrier matting will prevent grit, dirt and water from reaching the floor. Cleaning procedures are very simple. For larger floors, clients use standard machines that they will probably use on other floor finishes too. Cleaning and maintenance guidelines can be broken down into three stages. Daily cleaning. Floor manufacturers will usually recommend specific daily cleaning products which will not damage the floor finish. Medium term maintenance requires a thorough clean, followed by abrasion of the lacquer, ready for a new coat of seal to be applied. This is not to be confused with a full sand and seal, but a top up of the existing lacquer. Longer term maintenance. The floor is sanded back to bare wood and ready for resealing. This removes accumulated scratches, dents and minor surface damage and restores the floor to like new condition. Where a solid hardwood floor will require sanding during its lifespan, a synthetic floor will have reached the end of its life. Case study 1. Bath Abbey. Solid hardwood floors are often specified for prestigious projects such as the restoration of Bath Abbey by FCB Studios. Restoration ensures sustainable future. FCB Studios Footprint Project has sensitively restored the 1300 year old abbey with improvements to its accessibility, flexibility and to ensure the building's sustainable future. The specification called for a hard wearing and elegant floor that would be sympathetic to the character and historic significance of the Grade 2 listed buildings. As part of reworking and improving the Abbey's back of house facilities, FCB Studios designed the Song School, a new Timberline Choir practice room where up to 60 singers can rehearse. A very old, historic building which forms part of the UK's architectural heritage has been updated and adapted to secure its sustainable future. The proven long lifespan of the flooring was an integral part of the project. Expected to last well over 60 years, the floor forms part of the design to future-proof the Abbey. This is what Hugh Williams, Director of Music, Bath Abbey had to say about the renovation. The floor of the new Song School is a beautiful feature. We are particularly appreciative of the acoustic properties of the floor. The standard and finish of the floor is exceptional. It provides a warmth in contrast to the natural stone features and contributes enormously to the professional and high quality character of these unique new spaces. The Bath Abbey Footprint Project by FCB Studios has been shortlisted for Renewable Energy Project of the Year in the Business Green Leaders Awards 2022. The awards celebrate the best of the UK's green economy and burgeoning net zero transition. This category recognises projects that have demonstrated a wide range of environmental and economic benefits associated with clean energy deployment and development. 
The £19.3 million programme of restoration will help to secure the Abbey's physical future. Case study 2. Imagine, Montessori School. A Montessori school in Valencia was the first in Spain to achieve double sustainability certification, Briam Outstanding and Green for Leaves. The architectural design was by Gradolian Sands. Architects Gradolian Sands designed Imagine Montessori School in Paterna, Valencia, with a brief to minimise energy use throughout the lifespan of the building. As a result, the school was the first in Spain to achieve both Briam Excellent and Green for Leaves. Set within a pine forest, accessed through wooden walkways, the school forms a connection with nature at every level. In classrooms where learning zones are accessed freely by the children, the use of timber on both walls and floors sustain the relationship with nature and acts as a peaceful, unifying backdrop. The building makes use of carefully selected building materials with the lowest ecological footprint. Wood is used in the structure of the building, in the roof panel as well as interior and exterior enclosures. Therefore, wood has been used extensively throughout the building. The solid wood floor contributes to the health and well-being of students by providing a stable and healthy indoor climate. Case Study 3 The Plus Vestre Street Furniture Norwegian street furniture company Vestre commissioned Big to design a new carbon neutral factory. The result is The Plus. The first project in the Nordic region to achieve the Briam Outstanding Classification. In the shape of a plus sign, Bjark Ingels Group has designed a new factory for Norwegian furniture manufacturer Vestre AS. The project is the first industrial building in the Nordic region to achieve the very highest environmental Briam rating by meeting the requirements for classification as outstanding. Combining sustainable architecture and high efficiency production, the PLUS is envisioned as a village for the community. The 6,500 square metre open production facility doubles as a 300 acre park for hiking and camping. It is a landmark design fully aligned with the region's mission to establish a green manufacturing industry. All materials used for the project were carefully selected based on their environmental impact. The facade was constructed in local timber, low carbon concrete and recycled reinforcement steel are also used. Every aspect of the design is based on principles of renewable and clean energy to match Vestre's eco-friendly production, which includes ensuring a minimum of 50% lower greenhouse gas emissions than comparable establishments. On the rooftop, 1,200 photovoltaic panels are placed and angled according to optimal solar efficiency. Excess heat from the panels is connected to an ice water system for cooling. Hot and cold storage tanks, heat pumps and energy wells as a storage support system. Overall the system contributes to at least 90% lower energy demand than that of a similar conventional factory and is a carbon neutral facility. The four production units are built with a 21 meter free spanning cross laminated timber creating flexible column free spaces. From all four sides of the buildings visitors and staff are invited to hike around the facility and gather on the green roof terrace transforming the Furniture Factory Museum into a campus in the woods. The plus reinforces Vestre's vision of socially responsible design. Seven steps to tackle climate change. Number one, whole life carbon approach. Wood acts as a carbon store. It is natural and renewable. Number two, sustainable procurement. Source wood responsibly through certification schemes and socially responsible supply chains. Number three, retrofit. Timber is well suited to retrofit projects due to its flexibility of use, suitable for many different applications. Number four, and if you can't retrofit, use modern methods of construction. This reduces product wastage and operational costs as construction time is generally faster and takes place off-site. Number five, health and well-being. Wood is good for our health and well-being. It makes people feel as good indoors as they do being outside. Number six, Behaviour change. Inspire change through best practice examples and evidence. Number seven, offset carbon. Wood is a cost-free solution to carbon capture, ideal for sectors of the economy that cannot become carbon neutral. The many ways a hardwood floor is sustainable. Designed to last. Quality that lasts for generations, timeless style and exceptional lifespan. 
Zero wood waste. Using every part of the tree biomass in the form of wood waste powers the factory and local grid. Green credentials. EPDs, BRE Green Guide, A plus rated, accreditation towards BRIAM and LEED. Eco-friendly flooring, 100% solid hardwood, recyclable, reusable and biodegradable. Wellbeing, floors and wood care that carry indoor climate certification. Responsible forestry, floors that are chain of custody certified through FSC and PEFC. Yunkers on MBS Source and Chorus. Yunkers has added its solid wood flooring to MBS Source and MBS Chorus. All specifications are now available for quick download. This enables architects and specifiers to easily compare like-for-like -like flooring products, as well as add BIM objects to projects directly from the cloud-based system. This includes products for all sectors such as public, commercial, residential and sports projects using plank and two-strip boards. Sports flooring systems will fulfil both the ESFA specification recommendation and comply with the Department of Education's design rules for safety and low carbon. Acoustic and levelling systems, as well as the company's own produced professional wood care range, also appear in MBS Source and MBS Chorus. Yunker's profile on MBS features all the company's independently verified certification. This includes FSC, PEFC, EPDs, ISO 14001 and the Danish Indoor Climate Label, which are all recognised for BRIAM assessments.